Hello church, um, I've got a word on my heart I want to share with you, just something beautiful that the word and the, uh, the, word and the spirit has revealed to me um, out of the Psalms. Psalm 127 has been a theme for a while and I think even for some of you it's, it's been a theme. Um, I'm going to read the first half of it and then we're going to just work through it a little bit. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain that you rise up early and go, to la and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. It starts by saying, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Now, the first comment there is, one can often, um, when you read the word house in the word of God, then you think of God's house, the church. Um, but what is meant here is it's written to everyone, and it's just referring to work that's being done. It's referring to the building of your house, even your house, or whatever you do, whatever work you're engaging in. It says, unless, unless the Lord's building it, you are laboring in vain and it is such a reminder for me that we should really evaluate what we're doing with our lives our our careers our families everything and just make sure that that what we build is what he is building um, unless the lord watches over the city the watchman stays awake in vain sometimes we really care for stuff we nurture it we want to make sure it works we watch over it um, we blow on the uh, on its coals to give it momentum and to see the fire light up whatever it is that we want and even even sometimes it's beautiful kingdom things um, but it says unless the lord does the watching over it then our guarding of it protecting of it nurturing of it is 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 in vain also um i got a vision just a while back about um uh, as if god is inviting us to enter a um, kingdom space where we can build kingdom and it's almost like a um, just like a big building site and we walk in there and somewhere in the corner in the back Jesus was busy building in the vision there was some building is going on and he was there but as I walked in I saw oh there's something over there that's broken I think I can fix it and I started to fix that thing um, it was kingdom. It was, you know, it was this uh, building of the Lord that He's inviting us into. And then I was starting to fix it. And then somewhere else I saw an empty uh, space where there's nothing on. And I started to imagine what this could be and what could be built there and what I've seen others build. And, and so I started to build something there that I envisaged and thought was amazing. And then um, as I built those things, I just, as, as I started building them, I just felt the Lord say, but. Um, you should come and build with me. You're in the kingdom space, but you're not building with me. You're building your own thing. And even in kingdom, sometimes we think when something is good or it's kingdom in general, that it is, um, you know, it's um, it's more than allowed. It's, it's in the will of God and we should continue to pursue whatever we do as long as it's within that realm. But even in this, it is like, God saying, come and build with me where I'm building. So for that, you need my spirit you, to guide you. You need the word of God to show you what kingdom is, the realm of it. And you need the spirit of God to direct you where he is at. Um, for a few reasons, some of whom we see in Psalm 127. But the other one, a big reason for building with him is relational reason he is the father that wants to build with us that wants us to be with him while he's building not only to walk onto the kingdom site and say oh let me build my little piece in the kingdom side but to build with him is um, so important for him because he's a working God and he wants us to work with him build with him where's the spirit saying God is building where he's inviting you to build with him and then I saw as if I'm building some of these things, beautiful kingdom things, um, and thank God is not in everything in my life that it's like that, but uh, I 
saw how I'm building it and then um, it will it almost seem like like I have to put so much momentum into it and so much hard work and it doesn't work that well it's just there's just not favor on it it's just it doesn't work that well you know you just need to blow momentum into the thing the whole time and then something comes and it kind of knocks over a wall and you get so involved in trying to fix it and fix it and fix it and make this thing perfect that it consumes all your energy and you think this is godly and kingdom but then it isn't because unless the Lord builds the house those who labor labor in vain unless the Lord watches over it the watchman stays awake in vain and big revelation for me from that is Lord as I'm engaging this kingdom site I want to know where you are building because I because a I don't want to waste my time and B I want to be with you it says in verse 2, it is in vain that you rise up early and go to late rest. Um, and go late to rest. Interesting way that they've written that, that you go late to rest. It's in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. I want to just declare whatever you're doing, whether it's the building of God that you're partaking in or whether it's your own thing, for both of those, we can end up in a place where we believe we need to rise up early and go late to rest. And we eat the bread of anxious toil. We work hard anxiously. Um, but he gives to his beloved sleep. Now, 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 this last section of this is linked to the first that says, unless the Lord builds the house, the those who labor, labor in vain. And it seems that when the Lord is building, we can sleep well. And his building, his favor, his workmanship on whatever it is that's busy happening will ensure that it succeeds with us in rest. In this case, sleeping, actual sleep. There is no reason to, for prolonged periods of time, go without sleep, very practically, if we're building with him. Sometimes what happens is we're not building with him at all. It's just our own thing, just our own pursuit, our own career pursuit, our own financial pursuit, whatever it is. And we're just putting toil in it. That's obviously just vain, you know. It just you, you should just cast that with working and thinking aside. But when when it's a kingdom thing um, and you didn't hear from you, you don't know that your following of Jesus led you to do this. Um, but it seems like a kingdom thing. The pursuit is as vain and you can just as well just park that. But when the pursuit has come from a wrestle with God and I've, many of my pursuits have been from a wrestle with God and I found him in the word and through the spirit and I know what I'm doing is with him and for him. Even in that place, I can take the responsibility that's his and put it on me and still I want to rise up early and go late to rest so that I can make sure that this thing that God said is being built right. And I think it's justifiable and glorious and I end up in a bad space because I'm supposed to sleep in faith knowing he does it. And so sleep is such a practical thing. But for me, the one day when I was working through this, I felt the Holy Spirit just tell me when you compromise on sleep, you're not compromising on sleep, you're compromising on faith. You're compromising on sleep, you're compromising on faith. Sleep, my beloved son. Make sure you get your seven to eight hours a night. And I'm saying this to many of you that are working careers. If that's the thing that God is building, make sure you allow his favor to be clear. His, his wonders that he works while you are sleeping to be clear. That you can work working hours and you can sleep sleeping hours eight to ten hours seven to eight hours and you can just um, wait on him to see the results of that so do not fall for the trap that says that you um, well it's somehow glorious and somehow admirable to just like you know go without sleep for long periods of time because what you're doing um, it's even, you know, kingdom and amazing and all that stuff. It actually gives God so much less glory if you did it, you know. And he wants you to sleep the sleep of faith and to not eat the bread of anxious 
toil and not rise up early and go late to rest, um, but to be at peace in rest, actual sleep, actual rest, and see Him do the work. And the last little insert that's quite I find quite amusing is now a lot of you guys are um, young uh, parents like us and uh, some of you are on your way there and you might say okay cool that's that's a nice scripture but I've got children so sleep you know sleep doesn't happen in this season of my life and I understand that I, I just think it's rather funny that the next verse um, I just read to you verse 1 and 2 and Verse 1 and 2, but verse 3, after it says, where well, he gives to his beloved sleep, I think it's really funny that verse 3 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. He continues to speak about your children. I, I, I think that even for us parents, that God is inviting us to find a way where we walk in his favor, in his ways, and where rest and sleep is is possible so i want to encourage you to as you engage the kingdom way um, as, you, as you engage the kingdom building site first of all you make sure that you don't build anything that's not on it because that's just clear vanity but even when you build on it don't build on it for for um your own sake don't build on it because you just want to do something kingdom and you think whatever kingdom you do would be amazing and you feel good about yourself no but work with jesus find through wrestling with him and through being attentive to the holy spirit where is he at and do what it is that he's busy doing and then you live a life of rest because when we do our sabbath and when we do our sleep well it means that we actually saying god you must bring the glory because i'm not going to work 16 hours and then say it was me but i'll sleep in faith rest in faith sabbath in faith when i'm building what you are building such a beautiful way of thinking because it means that what we do would be ultimately fruitful it would be ultimately restful and um, peaceful and it would be in relationship with Jesus. What we do then would be ultimately fruitful, it would be restful and peaceful, and it would be in relationship with Jesus. Let's contend for that. Let's con continue to contend for that peace that Jacques also preached about. It says, seek, seek peace and pursue it. And this is part of that. As I'm seeking that, um, I just saw this and I, I thought it's such a beautiful reminder for us to make sure that we find his way where there would be fruit and there would be rest and there would be relationship with him when we are building what he's building be blessed church